For about 45 minutes actress Sarita Geri held the stage by herself at Mandala Theatre every evening between August the 12th and 27th. She did so while delivering to us director Salakchian Bharati's poignant script that explores the process of the making of a witch, or boxy by society. The story I'm telling is not something exceptional. Underaged marriage and women being labelled as witches happens every day. But it has become normal to us. So even if it is in the newspaper, we read it, we turn the page, and we don't think about it anymore. I didn't want to turn the page, I wanted to look deeply into what underaged marriage does to girls. What are their stories? And why do we blame women as witches? In my opinion it is because our society is so entrenched with patriarchy that it also influences our imagination and thought processes. But I believe in the power of theatre to stimulate new ways of thinking, imagining and behaving. Through the play I ask the audience, where are the witches, has been eloquently explained by Bharati elsewhere. The play starts with a dreamy school girl, no older than ten, performed with lively candor by Giri, the bane of child marriage and its horrific effect on a young girl's body and mind explodes on stage next, with Giri shining in the role of the much older, macho groom who takes her by force. The nightmare begins and her life slowly unravels through an unhappy marriage where she is a regular victim of marital rape, subsequent widowhood and finally, a ravishment by her own father-in-law that pushes her across the border of sanity. The dexterity with which Gary alternately slips into the many roles, the devastated young girl and then a grown woman, then her two ravishers, and the older witch who also happens to be holding the narrative together as a sutradha, to name a few, leaves us in little doubt of Giri's exemplary performative skills. Boxy K.O. Gar works as a play not because it brings to us a new story. It works because it draws our eyes to the regularity with which such incidents still happen in this part of the world. It picks out how society shapes us so that even the people we most trust, our own families, work hand in glove with the patriarchal system that perpetuates such exploitation. It also draws our attention to the many ways in which women themselves work tirelessly to perpetuate norms that subjugate them. Instead of offering her strength and a voice to rebel, the girl's mother and then her mother-in-law both act as accomplices to a system that dehumanizes and exploits a woman's body for labor and sex.